Well, President Biden yesterday announced that the U.S. will send Ukraine 31 M1, M1 Abrams tanks, a major reversal from the Pentagon suggestion last week, which opposed doing this exact same thing. The maintenance and the um, the high cost that uh, it would take to maintain an, an Abrams is just it just doesn't make sense to provide that to the Ukrainians at this moment. Um, as you well, know, the Pentagon's deputy press secretary there also explained that the Abrams use different different types of fuel and has a different engine, really a turbine jet engine compared to other battle tanks. This is a tank that is um, requires jet fuel, whereas the Leopard and the um, the Challenger, uh, th it's a different engine. They require diesel. It's um, a little bit easier to maintain. But the, the Biden decision comes after months of pleas from the Ukrainians requesting these tanks. And this, as Russia is also gearing up for a renewed offensive that is expected in the spring, still these highly maneuverable tanks will likely reach Ukraine in three to six months, some are estimating. The U.S. will be buying them with congressionally approved Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative funds. And again, after weeks of hesitation yesterday, Germany also announced it would be sending Ukraine 14 of it's Leopard 2 battle tanks. All right, joining us now for more on this is retired Brigadier General uh, from the U.S. Air Force, Blaine Holt. Great to see you, Blaine. Great to be with you both. All right, uh, you know, we were talking about this, and I, th I, I still think we, we have this demand from Ukraine for F-16s, but before we talk about jets, I think we still need to talk about these tanks because the timing here is suspicious. And, and John Kirby kind of talked around this yesterday. The accusation from some, many in the press, is that this was really a quid pro quo, that the U.S. had to give up these, you know, commit to sending these M1 Abram tanks before Germany would agree to send the Leopard tanks. Yeah, this is exactly what that is. And this is why you don't want to debate your strategy or come to negotiations publicly when you're in a NATO setting. You know, um, uh, Chancellor Schultz started it off and said, I'm not going to be sending any tanks until I see Abrams moving. And then we said, we're not going to be sending any Abrams. You need to do more. Um, that was fine, but we're we were showing that weakness in our resolve publicly. And then we actually just relent to what Olaf Schultz wanted anyway, which is, OK, I'm sending uh, uh, the Leopard 2 now because finally America is going to go ahead and send these Abram tanks. It's it doesn't send a message of strength. And it also kind of transmits a punch to the Russians that. Time's running out. We're going to see some high-end weaponry well, coming to this theater. Exactly that, General Holt. Let's get your take on this. So Russia is fully aware of what's coming, where it's coming, uh, you know, the types of, you know, infrastructure that we have here. What does this mean for their strategy? Um, how is Putin going to use this to, to leverage his, uh, his, you know, gaining more territory? Um, and where does he, you know, take this now to apply more pressure to the Ukrainians? Right. Good point. So they we left a critical step out of this. If we're going to up the ante with risk and lethality on the battlefield. Let's get something for it. Let's use that as diplomatic leverage to get the Russians to Vienna and talk about this war. But we're not doing that. Instead, we've just given them a lot of information about what we're going to be doing in three to six months. If I was a, a Russian general, I'd be looking at that as, wow, before the thaw happens and soon, we better get an offensive mounted uh, because the cost imposition is going to go way up for us. So we better start making moves on uh, Ukraine. Uh, uh, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. Now, the M1 tanks, they're incredible tanks. But, you know, isn't this like bringing a knife to a gunfight if the prime minister, Dmitry Medvedev, is talking about sending hypersonic missiles perhaps into Odessa or someplace like that? Uh, it can be. Uh, and, you know, to the deputy uh, speaker's point there at the Pentagon, uh, they're logistically intensive and they require jet fuel. So the logistics tail's got to be there. It's going to have to be a U.S. logistics tail. But where's the air power? Uh, you know, tanks are tanks, but modern warfare. And, you know, if you remember back to shock and on what we did in Baghdad, uh, we can limit some of the casualties, these horrific murders on the battlefield, uh, innocent lives. If, if we start to now focus on the uh, appropriate effects that come with air power and uh, and we need to we need to focus on that because uh, tank warfare is just going to grind up this nation. Right. And that's really what this conflict right now is about for so many people are the innocent Ukrainians who are being slaughtered by Putin's forces. Uh, they seem to be pawns in this whole game. Thank you, Blaine Absolutely. Holt, Brigadier General. Great to see you as always.